Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a console app that lists the names of all videos in any YouTube playlist. I'll supply the program with the ID of the playlist and it'll show us the names of all the videos in that playlist. For example, I have a playlist of my own named Programming Videos, which contains my conference talks, classroom training sessions, and screencasts that I made on computer programming topics. This is the ID of the playlist. If I ran my program with this ID, it should show me all the items, that is, all the videos in this playlist. Now, it doesn't have to be my own playlist. I can even try this on someone else's playlist and I don't need their permission for this. However, with this method I'm going to show you today, I'm only going to be able to see the videos that they made public. So we won't be able to see their private videos or unlisted videos or videos they have yet to publish but they have scheduled for a later date. To see all of that, we need their permission and so we'll need to use OAuth and we'll do that bit in a later video. If you're wondering what that OAuth thing is that I just mentioned, then watch the videos in this playlist of mine. The same link is also provided in the description section of this video. If you're dying to see some code at this point, head over to this GitHub URL and you can come back and listen to the explanation later. This link is also provided in the description section of this video. If a user's public data is all we want, we need only an API key for our application. This API key is a way for YouTube to know who or which application is asking for data. This helps YouTube not only to authenticate the request, but also to charge the owner of the application some money for each request. There is a fixed quota for the number of requests you can make for free and anything beyond that is chargeable per request according to the size of the response. Now I'll be showing you this API key of course because then anyone could use it and I'll start getting billed. Next, I'm going to enable the YouTube data API in the console for use within my application, FUBAR. To use this API, we're going to have to make a GET request to this URL. I know this because I went to the YouTube Data API's reference page. Then I studied it a little bit and then I found out that the endpoint I wanted was playlist items. To this request, I will supply the following required parameters. A parameter named key, which will have the value of the API key I just generated. I'll have to supply the playlist ID, and the only other required parameter is called part. This indicates the list of data you want in response to your request. Normally, when you make a request to the YouTube API, it returns everything in a big JSON object. Now, this guy is really big with all kinds of data about the thing you requested. This response is a top-level JSON object with other child objects in it, which may have other child objects in them. Most of the times, you don't want the whole thing returned. So with this parameter, you can say which parts of the data you want returned, or in other words, what objects from inside the main big daddy object of the, or the parent object do you want in the response. This helps you avoid getting lots of data back that you don't want saving you precious bandwidth, also improving scalability for the YouTube API, and helping you improve your cost, because YouTube charges you more money if you ask for more data. If you ask for less data, it charges you less money. For this request, to get a list of videos in the playlist, you may apply one or more of these values for the parameter named part. The question is, which one do we want? To figure that out, let's try out a simple request in this playground thing that YouTube has made for us. And then we'll inspect the response and decide which ones we want. 
For now, let me ask for everything so that we can see what we want and what we don't. Okay, so it looks like since I want only the title of each video, I'll just have to need to ask for the snippet object. I don't need the content details. It looks like all of this is coming in an items array, which is an array of different kinds of objects, where each object represents a video. And there's a whole bunch of data about each video. And then this object has an object called snippet, which has the name of the video by the property title. It also has a description property. Maybe these are the two I'm interested in. So my part will be snippet. I don't need content details. I don't need ID. I don't need status. I don't need the rest of the stuff. I'll just apply part equals snippet. That was all the required parameters we need to supply. But wait a minute. If I supply the value snippet to the part parameter, I still get the whole snippet object, most of which I really don't care about. It looks like I would be happy if I just received the title from inside the snippet object without receiving the rest of this, or maybe the title and description. Let me get both the title and description just to show you, but we won't be using the description as in we won't be displaying it on the user interface. To filter out further what information we need returned in the response from a specific object out of all its properties, we use a fields query string parameter. This takes a list of fields, comma separated. If you want nested fields inside one of these objects, you can use an XPath-like syntax. So if I were to inspect the real response, it looks like I want this items array because it has all these objects. But from within the items array, for each item, I just need the snippet. And in fact, for each snippet, I just need the title and description. So my fields query string parameter would look like this. Fields equals items slash, that is inside of items, I need the snippet. And from the snippet object, I need just these two properties. Wait, let me also get this page info guy here because it tells us how many items are in this playlist. Note that this gives you a complete count of items in the playlist, including the hidden ones, including the private ones, including the unlisted ones, the scheduled ones that have not yet been published, etc. But in the items array, what you get back are only the public videos. So that'll be a small subset of the total count, but since I want the total count, let's just get this page info object as well. So finally, my fields will look like this. Fields equals page info, comma, items slash snippet, and within the parenthesis, the properties, title and description. Finally, the API returns a default of five items, in this case, five videos or information about five videos with every request. Now you can change how many items you want in the response by supplying a value for an optional parameter named max results. By default, if you don't supply a value, five items are returned. The maximum value that this will take is 50. So you can get at the most 50 items per request. If the playlist has more than 50 videos, you get to see only the first 50 with each request. And with each request, you will get a next page token value that you can use in subsequent requests to the same endpoint to get the next page. In a later video, I'll show you how to do that and how pagination works. For now, let's just get 50 videos. And my playlist programming videos has only 37 videos or such. So I should be fine without paginating them. Okay, that's about it. We're all set. Let's write the code. Now, I'm going to show you 
some sloppy code first. I'm going to write some sloppy code first and then maybe later in another video if I feel like it and if there's enough interest, I will refactor it to make it a little more modular and a little better in quality, which is near to what I write when I write projects for my clients. But all good programmers, we included, this is how we all work. We don't set off on a journey to start writing the best code and we don't optimize for performance and for code modularity all in one go. This is how most programmers work. We have a goal. We make things work first. Later, we optimize. So you don't start off with too many goals all at once. You never aim for two targets all at once. So this isn't going to be the best code, but it'll be code that does the job.